Hello everyone. So in the previous lecture, we learned that carbon is a very important material because it is present um, everywhere. It's a we are a carbon-based life form. It is also uh, an element that is present out in the outer space. And carbonaceous materials let, uh, tell us a lot about the um, the possibility of life. Uh, and also, we know we are, we can understand the evolution of life on our planet uh, by uh, understanding the carbon materials. Now you might tell me that I'm, I don't care about all these things. Huh? I'm taking this, uh, this course because I want to get a good job in a company. Hmm? Fair enough. Okay. In that case, let me tell you, carbon is also a very important technological material. What is a technological material? A material that is used for, for a lot of, tech, for manufacturing purposes, huh? for making things. Okay. Now, these are the reasons I would call economic reasons for, uh, for learning carbon. Hmm. Okay. So I told you in the previous lecture that carbon is a is a light element. Hmm. So most of the carbon materials happen to be very lightweight because of and also they're very mechanically very strong because carbon forms these long sheets like molecules, chain like molecules. And there are these are uh, covalent bonds, which are actually very strong bonds. And that is why you have light and strong. This is a very important property of, of a lot of carbon materials. They are light and strong. Why do you require light and strong materials? Nowadays, for a, for example, if you think about an aircraft, huh, for aircraft applications for making the body of the aircraft, various parts, also the uh, the blades of your uh, gas turbine, the turbo engine. Hmm. So, what do you require? You need materials that can withstand high temperatures, that are mechanically very strong, and preferably lightweight. Hmm. So nowadays we are we are for many applications still dependent on metals and alloys and super alloys. But these things can be replaced potentially, or some of them have already been replaced by these, these nice carbon materials, which have the desired mechanical strength. And obviously, lightweight is the, is the property of carbon anyway. Now, one more important thing is that for many applications, you require materials that have an electrical conductivity. And that is the reason we use uh, metals. Hmm. Okay, Graphite or graphite-like carbons do have an electrical conductivity. Hmm which is not as high as that of metals. In fact, graphite is a semi-metal, huh? not a semiconductor, not a, not a, a you know, conductor in the traditional way. So you call it a semi-metal. Maybe in one of the lectures, I will explain to you based on the band structure, why do we call it uh, semi-metal? The point is that graphite has a reasonably high electrical conductivity, although lower than that of metals. And sometimes you can have some additives also in graphite and all graph or, or graphite like carbons and then you can get high conductivity structures so now you got everything huh? now you have the weight is good the uh, you know it's uh, mechanical strength is good graphite or graphitic carbons are also thermally conductive in most cases hmm. so we are not talking about diamond here but on the other hand diamond is a much lower fraction of carbon on earth or diamond like carbons huh? most of the carbons are graphite like structures because graphite is the most stable uh, thermodynamically favorable form of carbon. Hmm. So now all of these, um, these carbon materials have uh, very nice properties. So that is why they are already replacing metals in many industrial applications. Hmm. Okay, so here I have drawn this, uh, this chart that this is based on a very, uh, you know, quick internet search. So the numbers might not be perfect. But just to give you an idea that these are some of the uh, common applications of graphite. So you've all seen graphite in your pencil. But um, you probably uh, did not realize that a lot of batteries that you're using hmm, that also contain graphite electrodes. Hmm. Other than that, there are, uh, you know, you know that uh, graphite is used as a solid lubricant. You also uh, probably know I, uh, that graphite can withstand very, because it's, it's because of its thermal properties, it is used in the foundries. Hmm. So it is a very uh, important refractory material as well. Hmm. So for the casting, uh, for example, you're using sand cast. So sand is a refractory material. Similarly, graphite is used for more, uh, more specialized and more sophisticated casts. Hmm. So these are some of the applications of, uh, of graphite. And similarly, graphite like carbons or, uh, you know, uh, graphitic carbons. Again, we will learn about the definition, what is called graphitic and what is not. But these are, um, these type of carbon materials are of high industrial relevance. So these are very important technological materials. Materials. Hmm. Okay. Now you can make fibers from carbon. Huh? You must have heard carbon fiber. Nowadays, carbon fiber is uh, very important for any manufacturing engineer. Hmm. 
Mm. A lot of things. You you see now the cars that are made of carbon fibers. Huh? The bodies of aircrafts are being made of carbon fibers, and this has already reached you know the the production stage, the industrial uh, manufacturing stage. It's not a research uh, topic anymore. People are using carbon fibers and the composite materials based on carbon fibers for a lot of applications. So. Carbon also gives you this uh, this flexibility of making structures like fibers. Hmm. You will say, how do I make car fibers from carbon? Huh? Because it or if you if you take graphite, if you take your graphite from the pencil, it does not look elastic. Huh? So how do you pull fibers from it? The idea is actually to hmm, to make polymer structures. So you make these fibers into a polymer and then you convert it into carbon. This is one of the most important processes for this entire uh, for this entire course. Heat treatment and the controlled heat treatment of polymers or anything such as, for example, certain petrochemicals also, cokes and pitches, which are high in carbon content and how do you convert them into carbon? This is a process which has been industrially used for uh, for manufacturing graphite, for manufacturing glass like carbon, for a lot of other activated carbon. So all these large scale scale carbon materials, this this uh, technique has been used for uh, for several decades. Hmm. So this this is so what you can also do is now you can make fibers out of, for example, petroleum pitch and convert those fibers into carbon. So then you have what do you have carbon fibers? Hmm. So here I have also shown a, shown a graph where you see the demand, the global demand of carbon fiber. Hmm. Okay, so you can see that there is a, an increase there. So this is up to 2020. Again, this is based on a quick internet search. So numbers may not be perfect. I've not shown any error bars or anything. The point is that I just wanted to show you the trend, the increasing trend, which may, so 2022 is, is the, the last one that is the predicted one, and it might actually exponentially grow. So all over the world, there is a very, there is a rapidly increasing demand of carbon fiber manufacturing, okay? Now, it's not just carbon fiber, by the way. There are other carbon materials also. So I've just shown carbon fiber, but also for carbon black, for uh, many other carbon materials, there is an increasing demand. Now, because of this demand, of course, you also need supply. Hmm? So you have several business opportunities. Um, so not just in India, all over the world, but I'm talking about India because uh, nowadays we are promoting manufacturing in India and so on. So there are a lot of business opportunities, not just the, the bigger companies. But also um, there are many small manufacturers of uh, different carbon materials in India as well as all over the world. Hmm. Okay. Now, one thing I must tell you, if you, for example, want to, um, you want to have a startup, you know, you want to make carbon fibers. Hmm. Okay. That's, that's wonderful. We should do manufacturing. But whenever you're working with carbon or carbon based manufacturing, you must take care of the environmental uh, pollution aspects. Reason is that there is a very high probability when you are, whenever you're heating a polymer, you are, you know that you will be getting rid of the non-carbon atoms. And where do these atoms go? Where they either form tars or they form some sort of carbon, black carbon, brown carbon, and so on. These things, you can prevent them from going back into the environment. There is a possibility of catching these things, you know, for example, using specialized filters. You can even pass these uh, gases uh, through water and then catch a lot of them already. So there is uh, the point is that it's not that you should not do manufacturing. I mean, by this logic, we should never do any manufacturing in the world. Then the pollution will, uh, there will be no pollution. Then we should also, all of us should stop driving cars. Then there will be no pollution. We should minimize these things. Yes. But at the same time, it is important to, to perform manufacturing sometimes to also save en energy at a larger scale. Hmm. So manufacturing is important, but you need to make sure, especially when you're dealing with carbon, then you are taking care of all the, um, you know, all the environmental policies, for example. Thankfully, we do have a lot of policies uh, related to pollution control, but you need to make sure that you abide by them and especially um, if there is anything harmful that is being produced and the, if, even if something is not it does not seem very harmful. Make sure that you 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 take care of the environmental pollution aspects. Okay. Now, um, in India and again all over the world, several prominent business uh, players are actually involved in carbon-based manufacturing. What happens is sometimes you don't know that um, you know a certain manufacturer is also involved in carbon. The thing is that many manufacturers are actually making the raw material for other industries. So uh, let's take an example of uh, tire manufacturing, car tires. Hmm. 
So what are tires? They are made of carbon reinforced rubber. Reinforced means you, you mix carbon into that rubber for strengthening it. Hmm? Now, a lot of companies are making this reinforcement material, this type of carbon, carbon black. So a lot of people are, are actually, invo actually involved in, in, the, in the carbon black manufacturing. Um, in fact, India happens to be the second largest producer of uh, carbon uh, black in the world, first being China. So there are companies that are manufacturing carbon material, but because they are raw materials, they are not, you know, final products. And that is why sometimes we don't know that, um, you know, this is uh, this company exists or, or this is the production. OK, now there are some numbers again uh, based on you can do your own Internet search and probably, you know, by the time this lecture reaches you, the numbers have already changed. But the point is that you have, um, you know, a lot of uh, different carbon materials being produced in India all over the world. Some companies will produce more, uh, you know, carbon black. Some uh, countries will produce more, um, you know, graphite like carbon. Some com countries uh, have more production of glass like carbon. So there are different countries with different carbon uh, material production. Uh, but the point is that the numbers are large and they are rapidly growing. Hmm. Also, one more thing is carbon based composites. So I talked about the um, carbon fibers. Now these you must all the this aerospace applications and um, car manufacturing and so on. They are rather utilizing carbon based composites hmm, rather than, uh, you know, direct carbon materials. So what are these carbon based composites? Hmm. So this is what we are now going to learn. So these can be called also next generation uh, manufacturing material. Next generation is anything that is um, too advanced for the time being. Hmm. So that is the futuristic applications are um, yeah, very much. They, they very much include carbon composites. OK, so what are these carbon based composites? So com what is a composite in general? Hmm. So any uh, as I said, that materials can be anything. Hmm. Now, composite material is, is yet another thing that you uh, need to understand. Basically, it's a mixture of two or more materials. Hmm. Now, these materials should be chemically and physically distinct from each other. So it's not like making an alloy where you're making two, uh, mixing two metals and you have, you know, a solid solution, what you could call a solid solution. Huh? This is the composites are not like solid solutions. So they are not uniform materials. Hmm. So you do have two distinct phases, two distinct materials. This is a mixture of these two that those materials are known as composite materials. Typically, you will have something as a form of a matrix and then you add something into the matrix. Huh? So there is one matrix phase and there is an additive phase that is what is known as a composite material. There are also some other materials known as hybrid materials, which are more complex. Hmm. which are, uh, you know, maybe multi-material. They also have compli complicated structures. You, they have sometimes the sandwich-like structures. These are known as hybrid materials. Hybrids are typically more than two materials and also um, they can be very different from each other. Hmm. So there are also a lot of carbon materials are used for making the hybrids. Hmm. So let's talk about the composites. What are composites? Um, what do, how do we make composite from carbon fiber? Hmm. Now, what you first need to do is you can um, make a, you know, what is known as a braid. So you can basically make these kind of structures. You weave. Hmm, so woven carbon fiber mats is what you can prepare. And then you can have these woven carbon fibers laminated. So you have, you take one polymer, hmm, which is like a binder material, typically a highly viscous polymer. And uh, uh, this, these are known as resins. Huh? We'll talk about uh, resins a lot. Hmm. So you take one layer of these uh, woven carbon fiber mats and then you put some some resin you infuse some resin into it then you put another layer and then again infuse some resin into it and then another layer and so on these kind of structures are known as laminates so lamination is the layer by layer um, structuring or layer by layer manufacturing so these kind of structures the green color here uh, indicates resin and then the black I have shown that, you know, some carbon fibers are uh, in this direction huh? and some are uh, perpendicular, some are at a certain angle. So you will, if you do this, then your overall material becomes stronger and stronger. So these kind of uh, uh, materials are known as composites hmm. and composites can, however, also have just short carbon fibers or carbon nanotubes or, or any carbon structures, not just carbon necessarily, but since we are talking about carbon. So you can have various fibers mixed inside a polymer matrix also, the resin matrix in that case. So in, in all these all these cases, your resin matrix matrix is your um, resin is the matrix phase and the additive 
is the carbon uh, material which is typically carbon fiber mm. so you have these different types of composite materials that are based on carbon now they definitely feature a high mechanical strength in fact the very reason for making composite materials is to get high mechanical strength mm. and i have shown this picture the, the short fiber composite the picture i have shown is that of a bone mm. so why did i show a bone because these kind of composite materials are nowadays being used for making um, bone implants mm. what do what does a bone implant require mm. number one it should be biocompatible biocompatible uh, i think biocompatible you understand that it, the material does not really harm your cells but at the same time it does not degrade now if it does not degrade it may not be good for uh, for example some drug delivery applications because when you are doing drug delivery what do you want you want the drug to be infused inside uh, you know and then you want the drug carrier to degrade and you know uh, then go out of your body hmm. But that will not happen. Carbon is because of its stability, because of its inertness, it does not really degrade very easily. So we don't use it for those kind of applications. However, for making a bone implant, it, it's pretty good. You don't want your uh, bone to degrade over time anyway. Mm. You don't want your uh, your bone to uh, to get damaged or get corroded or chemical uh, chemically react to your body. Mm. So it does not offer any harm. And also these resins that are used in that case especially for, for uh, bone uh, implants or any biomedical implants, then also these resins are very highly uh, biocompatible. Hmm. And also they also do not have any harmful uh, effects. So they are also biocompatible. The point is that these kind of uh, carbon-based composites nowadays are very uh, extensively used for, or um, this is one of the next generation futuristic application where we, we have already started doing it. Hmm. Okay, so these are the composite materials. These have very high mechanical strength and carbon Polymer, now huh, one interesting thing is that so till now we were talking about the carbon resin composite. Mm, so resin, it's a polymer, mm, it's carbon uh, material into a matrix. Can you also make what is known as carbon carbon composites? Mm. Why should we make carbon carbon composite? Because resin or any polymer would typically not withstand very high um, or very extreme conditions. These are softer materials and these are hydrocarbons which uh, typically would degrade at higher temperatures. Huh? So let's say if I have 400 or 500 degrees temperature, that will not happen uh, for a bone implant, but it can definitely happen for uh, for a turbo engine blade. Hmm. So these kind of uh, applications, in that case, you need some materials that can withstand high temperature, but at the same time, they also have a high mechanical strength. Hmm. So now you already know that we can convert polymers into carbon. That is how we made our carbon fibers. In fact, hmm. what can what you can do is you can recarbonize this entire structure, recarbonize the resin in the composite. What will then happen? The material that you get will have carbon as the matrix and also carbon as the as the additive. Hmm. These types of materials are known as carbon carbon composites. Hmm. Remember that we are now still just using the term carbon in this case. So I told you carbon is not a unique material, but still now we are just using the term carbon. We are not using the term graphite or um, or anything else. Hmm. Also in the case of carbon fiber, we don't call them graphite fiber and diamond fiber. We just call them carbon. So there is a certain class of uh, carbon materials when we don't completely understand its microstructure or when it includes various types of microstructure so depending upon for example the heat treatment conditions you may actually have different carbon fibers with different uh, microstructure hmm. in that case the more uh, sort of general industrial name is just kept as carbon huh? and rather than we don't go into the details of how much graphite it is what is the crystallinity of the material that you will of course understand when you are making the carbon fiber and when you're going into the manufacturing then it becomes important what is the what what is the crystallinity and how do you get that crystallinity what are the process parameters but in general the industry the common industrial name is carbon fibers or carbon carbon composites hmm. okay now um as i said that the carbon carbon composites the biggest advantage of these uh, materials is that they can withstand very high temperatures and that's why they then become completely different type of uh, you know uh, uh, manufacturing materials and graphite and a lot of carbons are actually used for uh, making high temperature elements the temperature uh, uh, stability is very important for carbon and now we will in one of the lectures we will see the phase diagram of carbon and then uh, then you will see 
that at what temperature pressure, what kind of phases, crystalline phases, can exist in carbon materials, then you will see that this material can, this element can withstand some very high pressure temperature conditions compared to many others. Hmm. Also, you know, um, also the fact that graphite does not, um, it, it directly sublimates, it converts into vapor. The liquid carbon phases ex exist in very extreme conditions. All of these very interesting facts we learn in the phase diagram of carbon. Okay, so the point is that, um, yeah, we use these materials for high temperature applications and uh, also um, in general, the applications that you hear, the, when you hear the term carbon fiber, you know, whenever you hear that this is a, this aeros, uh, the, the whatever airplane body part is made of carbon fiber, they are actually car carbon fiber composites and not directly carbon fibers. Hmm. Uh, because just by, so if you see this, this first image, just, just you, if you see this woven carbon fiber mat, that is difficult to directly use. You typically, even for the weaving of carbon fibers, you often require a little bit of resin. Um, just to be able to weave them uh, nicely. Hmm. And then uh, the laminated composites or short, short fiber composites are, are typically what you see everywhere. Hmm. That is what industrially it's called carbon fiber, but it's actually carbon fiber composite. Hmm. Okay, so examples I already talked about, you can um, do your own Google search and then you can find out more applications of, of these um, carbon carbon composite materials and also carbon fiber composite material, uh, carbon uh, polymer composite materials. Huh? So now these hybrid materials, as I said, they contain um, sometimes also things other than carbon uh, uh, structures. But now if you take one carbon fiber, one carbon nanotube, not one, but I mean, you take carbon fiber, you take carbon nanotube, and then you mix them into the, uh, the resin matrix. Hmm? So this is this is also a composite in principle, but this is a little more complex. Hmm? Or if you give certain specific shape to your carbon structures, then also, mm, you know, you still have the resin and it's, you still have an additive and, and a matrix, but you may have something a little more than that. So all of these materials are generally known as hybrid materials. Hybrid materials um, are used, for example, for making wind turbine blades. Huh? So wind turbine is an interesting, uh, interesting application again. Um, I did not mention it here. So wind turbines uh, do not require very high temperature conditions, unlike you know the gas turbines. But what they definitely require is lightweight and um, you know the good the, the the ability of the blades. They they should not buckle. Hmm. So these kind of so mechanically strong structures. Hmm. Uh, and also uh, the lightweight structs, these are very important uh, parameters for, for wind turbine blades and a lot of wind turbine blades are still manufactured using um, uh, glass fiber reinforced uh, plastics. Hmm. But nowadays carbon fiber reinforced plastics are also, so huh, by the way, this, these composite materials are um, commonly industrially also known as carbon fiber reinforced plastics. Hmm. So when you hear carbon fiber reinforced plastics, that is carbon fiber mixed inside a inside a polymer matrix, it can be either way, short, short fiber or, or laminates. Hmm? So CFRP is what you will commonly hear or just carbon fiber. Hmm? Okay, so they have interesting manufacturing applications, of course. Okay, one interesting and also a very challenging thing, again, like I, in the previous uh, uh, slide, I mentioned to you that you should make sure that you are uh, taking care of the environment when you're doing manufacturing with carbon. Same thing again, when it comes to carbon fiber based manufacturing, um, it's important that you're able to recycle these carbon fibers hmm? because this is in fact an advantage of glass fiber are, uh, that is why they are used in, in still for a lot of applications because they're easier to, uh, to recycle. In the case of carbon fibers, it's slightly more difficult because of the fact again that carbon is a very stable material because of the fact that carbon uh, you know, does not degrade easily. So recycling and also it's not possible to melt carbon and, and that is why the reuse and recycling of carbon uh, fibers as well as carbon based composites is, is relatively more challenging. But these are all the aspects that you need to take care of when you're doing carbon based manufacturing. So um, from now on, we will now talk more about the carbon materials. But one thing I, I hope I was able to convince you that carbon is a very important technological material. And for all the engineers, for all the chemists, for all the everybody who's attending this, this uh, lecture, um, it is it is going to be used also uh, for, the, for both uh, academic and industrial uh, purposes. So this is a very important material.